Let's bring in the next guest, Gavin. Come on in here from Ford. How are you doing? Hey, Andrew, doing very well, very excited. Awesome, tell people who you are and what you do. I'm the CEO of a company called Autonomic. Uh, we build a cloud platform called the Transportation Mobility Cloud, or TMC. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that? Now, obviously, there's some big words, clouds in there. <laughs> Everyone's talking about cloud. What are you doing specifically to improve the world? And what are you showing off here at CES? So, so we build uh, software that automates common problems within transportation. Okay. Be it for large automakers like Ford Motor Company, mm -hmm or uh, smaller companies such as rental uh, companies, or even uh, scooter companies such as Spin, who's joining us over there. Okay, so companies that join you or use your technology, how is it changing their business or the world? Because things like cars, they've been around for you know a long time. A very long time. What are you looking to do to change the automotive or the transportation industry specifically? It's a great question. Uh, the future of transportation, I think, is going to be digital. Okay. Uh, we can see that from the likes of Uber, Lyft, uh, scooter technology, and so on. And what has been missing for automakers, for cities, and for developers is a single platform that abstracts all the complexity of the transportation ecosystem and puts it into a single, simple place where they can build modern applications in the cloud. Okay, and so let's say we have a futuristic world. Think of, we're looking in the future and we see the city of the future. Right. What practical changes have you, has your tech made in the city of the future versus what we see today? Traffic, I, I, I all think, over the I, place I think, I think in the city of the future, first of all, we have autonomous vehicle technology. Okay. And so the Transportation Mobility Cloud, or TMC, is able to route uh, autonomous vehicles. We demonstrated that actually with Ford Motor Company back in November in Miami for the Miami Experience. Okay. It's also able to leverage those vehicles with Postmates, with Walmart as early customers to deliver goods. Uh, as well. Autonomous. That's just, autonomously. Okay. That's just one aspect of, of the technology. Another one is scooters. Uh, the SPIN platform is integrated with TMC as well, which we've announced uh, today, and I would encourage anyone at CES to go and visit and learn a little bit more. Let me interrupt, interrupt you for a second. Tell me about scooters, because two years ago, scooters were like toys that you know 10-year-olds rode around on for fun, right. and then all of a sudden, people are scootering to work in their it's business amazing, suits. Right? And they're like, what? Where did this come from? What this happened? shows like the incredible innovation that's taking place in transportation at the moment. Right. Um, what, what's happened is that people have realized that there's not like a silver bullet or um, a single solution to the world's transportation needs. Right. What they're doing instead is choosing different options based on their need. Okay. If they live very close to their office, they might take a scooter. If they're taking mass transit, they might take a scooter for the last uh, part of the ride. Mm -hmm. If on the other hand, they're immobile, they might use a large uh, commuter solution such as we've got here at the Ford booth uh, for the uh, like emergency or non-emergency non medical transport. So we're seeing people use different forms of transportation based on their actual need, not having to resort to a traditional option, that is the only option that's being provided to them. That's where TMC really comes to the fore. Okay. Because we're able to unify those technologies in a single place. All right, now any questions you guys have, obviously I'm doing a lot of question asking. If you have any questions while you're watching, tweet them at us or drop them in the comments over on Facebook. Now let's talk about uh, business travel in particular for a moment. Business travel can be frustrating sometimes. You know, oh, just getting from I place know. to place. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, any, anyone who does business travel knows it's, a, it's an important part of the US economy, right? You need to get from place to place, but traffic and especially airports, there's so much congestion. How do you see this tech changing that? Well, the, the very cool aspect of what we've been able to do with TMC is because we're onboarding a lot of vehicles and other diverse aspects of the transportation ecosystem, mm -hmm. we can consolidate all of that information into one place. Working with partners such as RideOS, who's here at the booth as well today, mm -hmm. we can use all of that information in aggregate to better optimize how traffic and transportation actually works at the level of a city. And partnering with cities, we can integrate them into the TMC and share that information in a very safe, secure uh, way that protects individual people's privacy mm -hmm. so that more optimal solutions can be built. Okay, so you get the control over your privacy and things like that. Right. What about, uh, again, looking to the future, a lot of people today kind of worry about safety from the perspective of, if things are going autonomous, I'm losing control. What do you say to that as a response? Like, what does autonomy bring that actually creates a more safe you know, road infrastructure? Well, as you know, many of your viewers may know, um, there are actually a very large number of collisions on the road today. Right. I think that uh, the regulatory authorities have estimated something like 40,000 just in North America wow. alone this year. 
I think that at this point in time, we have a, a, a really unique opportunity to dramatically reduce the impact on human life through autonomous vehicle technology by really learning from all humans, understanding what, through TMC, what a human, uh, a great human driver right. on their very best day looks like, and then replicating that within the artificial intelligence system. I really think that we can make a breakthrough and have a huge societal impact with that. Okay, and just, just to be clear, can you, can you tell us what the best human driver on their best day looks like compared to what you see in the future? Yeah, with like cars have like IMUs and so right. on uh, today, and so we can study very closely what human driver behavior actually looks like, and then inform you know research and development groups, you know machine learning uh, groups and so on about what great looks like and what what poor looks like as well. Okay, and so the greatest driver I assume is not as great as a driver that's just focused completely autonomously on the road without any sort of mental right because hu right? humans are very easily distracted. Cool. Gavin, thank you so much thank for you. giving us a look at TMC. We appreciate that. Up next, here from the show floor at CES 2019 with National Car Rental, we're taking a look at the best tech here from the show floor. Hey, how hey, you doing? Andrew. Tell people who you are. Hi, I'm Rich Strader. I'm with Ford. I'm Vice President of Mobility uh, Platforms and Products. So all right, Rich. engineering underneath all of this stuff. Rich, we are here with National Car Rental from the show floor, CES 2019. We've been talking about the best tech we've seen on the show floor. Now, you in particular represent a car company, which obviously National Car Rental, one of the partners from Ford. Let's talk about what you guys are showing off here at CES 2019. What is the most exciting thing you've got here in your booth that you want to talk about? Single most exciting thing is, I think you just spoke with Gavin about the transportation mobility yes. cloud. We've got new sets of partners that are starting to build out, development partners that are building out applications that can be used with our vehicles or any other transportation system that uses that platform. And we really feel like that's the start of you know, this adoption as a standard and an ability to get, you know, the, the problem when you don't have a standard platform out there is you don't get the scale of all the development community building things out. So a car company alone, or even enterprise, we can't do it ourselves. We right. need developers to jump on the platform and build it for us. So we're very excited to see that happening, people adopting the platform. Okay, now if you have any questions for us as you're watching the stream, please do tweet them to us or drop them in the comments over on the Facebook stream. Let's talk about CV2X. What does that stand for before we jump in? Connected vehicle to anything. So, Connected vehicle to anything. Right. So, now, that is that sounds ambitious. <laughs> Give us the rundown of what that means. Okay, well imagine a, you know one vehicle being able to talk to another vehicle. Right. A vehicle being able to talk to infrastructure in a city, traffic lights, um, traffic flow, traffic control systems, uh, or even other detection um, you know ob options that we put in the, in the you know like on buildings or whatever. Sure. So the vehicle itself can make a direct communication with those devices and learn about its environment. And so what that could do for you as a driver is, uh, as an example, if a, a vehicle, like a, a motorcycle was equipped, I think we'll demo this here, okay. if a motorcycle was equipped with a, a, a CV2X device, yep. and your vehicle was, and it was in your blind spot, your vehicle would be able to tell you that and avoid creating a collision with that motorcycle, right? If you were headed into a uh, stoplight and you weren't stopping in time, your vehicle could recognize that, it could know that it was red, and it could stop on behalf of you. So in a way, like, Obviously, we're used to having the full control of our vehicles that we're driving, but in a way, this gives you more control over your safety right. by allowing the car to do some of the work for you. Right, and in general, it'll be up to the, to the operator of the vehicle to decide. For instance, I could tell it to alert me if, if I was approaching something, or I can say, I want you to stop and avoid hitting it, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to, to, to deploy it the way you want to. Okay, um, let's touch on, I, we talked about business travel a moment ago. Um, business travel, congestion, moving around cities, where do you see this technology, you know, in the future, changing you know, the, the dynamics of traffic and congestion? Well, I think, you know, if you think about having, first off, a platform that connects everything together, and then this instrumentation, this connected vehicle to whatever, right. you, you now have the ability for the first time to be able to orchestrate movement in a city, right? So you can coordinate the transit systems with the individual vehicles being operated, you know, and, and you know, you can, provision for peak times of the day and route people to different areas. You can provision for special events like CES as right. an example. And, and you can actually try to you know, harmonize that use. 
Um, also, uh, one of the things that we, we think is, is pretty uh, likely is we'll be able to minimize the need for downtown parking because we can actually get people into and out of the area quickly. We can get goods delivered to their vehicles so they don't have to actually get out and go shopping for it. Nice. Things of that nature, right? So all of those things help make that experience for everybody, business travelers and, and everyone else. That's fantastic. Hey, if you're just tuning in, we are here live from the show floor at CES 2019, uh, taking a look at some of the best tech, some of the new announcements here from the show floor with National Car Rental. We are talking with Ford right now about the connected future. So ideally, as you mentioned uh, to me earlier when we were talking, this isn't just a Ford technology, it's, it Ford's built this, but it's not something that you're trying to hold only for no. yourselves, right? Explain that to me. Well, it's an open platform, and the intent of that is to offer it to other OEMs, any city or city service or transportation service that would want to integrate into it, any third parties that want to add services onto it. You'll see examples of that here on the show floor today. Mm -hmm. um, any developers that want to build on top of it. And the, the rationale for being open is we would like to create an, a standard, essentially, for this to happen. We don't see this as a differentiation for Ford, right? Everybody's got to connect to their vehicle, right? It's right. just the state of the art today. So we do see this as an enablement to, to the next level of apps and capabilities that people who drive vehicles or people who just want to get around a city can take advantage of. And we can't do it if we don't have a standard. So right. that's our intent. Make so it open and extensible. Got you. Now, for those people who are hearing this, you're thinking, you know, that's what I want. That's the future that I want to see. That's the future I want to be a part of. How long do you think from now that we'll start seeing some of this tech you know, around town, basically, in the average American city? Right. So we're, we're piloting now in just a few cities, and as we discussed earlier, that's a limited scope. So we would expect within a couple of years we'll see a much more production scale and production scope you know, application of the, the platform and these apps that sit on top of the platform. So fairly shortly you'll see this come into production, and it'll, it'll be in a city near you. Okay. And then, obviously, for today, for 2019, with Ford, you guys do offer a choice of vehicles that does have some of this tech built in already, doesn't it? Yes, correct. So which vehicles are those? Well, in 2019, every vehicle we make will, in the U.S. will be connected. So at 100%. All your vehicles. All vehicles. Um, to the TMC and to the, you know, essentially all of these services we talked about. We have cer certain vehicles, for example, like the police responder that you've seen, that get, we have an extra set of services, apps that we've created specifically mm -hmm. for that fleet of customers, for emergency responders. And, and so depends really on, you know, whether it's an end consumer retail right. customer. So they'll get connectivity packages, they'll be able to control their vehicle, locate it, do all sorts of things, you know, to understand their driving habits, those types of things. Um, our, our fleet customers will have different options. I mean, you, you saw the uh, emergency, non-emergency medical trans, you know, transport system yep. we built over here. So you'll see it in a lot of different forms show up, but it's in many of our vehicles today, and we intend to expand that to all of our vehicles in the future. Perfect. Thank you so much for giving Thank us you, a Andrew. look at CV2X. We appreciate it. This is CES 2019, live from the show floor. We are here today.